Good morning, my sisters and my brothers, and welcome to the Casino website for our, our daily Mass. Today we're celebrating Wednesday of the fourth week of Lent. But I wanted to wish each of you a happy St. Patrick's Day. But we're going to be celebrating the fourth Wednesday, our fourth Wednesday of Lent uh, liturgy today. And let us begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I pray to you, O God, for the time of your favor. Lord, in your great love, answer me. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and the fellowship of his Holy Spirit be with you all. My sisters and my brothers, let us offer before the Lord those things that have been part of our life that we're not so proud of. The little sins, the times that we may have let down our spouse or our significant other, but most especially the times that we have left ourselves down in the sight of God. And let us ask him for forgiveness as we pray. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned through my own fault in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. And I ask Blessed Mary of a Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Lord, you reward virtue and forgive the repentant sinner. Grant us your forgiveness as we come before you confessing our guilt. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. My sisters and my brothers, let us be attentive to the word of the Lord for the day. A reading from the book from the prophet Daniel. King Nebuchadnezzar said, Is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you will not serve my God or worship the golden statue that I set up? Be ready now to fall down and worship the statue I had made. Wherever you hear the word of the trumpet, the sound of the trumpet, flute, lyre, or harp, psaltery, bagpipe, and all other musical instruments otherwise, you will be instantly cast into the white, hot furnace. Who is the God who can deliver you out of my hands? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered, King Nebuchadnezzar, there is no need for us to defend ourselves before you in this matter. If our God, whom we serve, can save us from the white, hot furnace and from your hands, O King, may he save us. But even if you will not know, O king, that we will not serve your God or worship the golden statue which you have set up. Nebuchadnezzar's face became livid with utter rage against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And he ordered the furnace to the heated seven times more than usual and had some of the strongest men in his army, bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and cast them into the white hot furnace. Nebuchadnezzar rose in haste and asked his nobles, Did we not cast three men down into the fire? Assuredly, O king, they answered. But, he replied, I see four men unfettered and unhurt, walking in the fire. And the fourth looks like the Son of God. Nebuchadnezzar explained, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who sent his angel to deliver his servants that trusted in him. They disobeyed the royal command and yielded their bodies rather than serve or worship any god except their own god. My sisters and my brothers, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please respond 
glory and praise forever. Blessed are you, O Lord, the God of our fathers, praiseworthy and exalted above all forever. And blessed is your holy and glorious name, praiseworthy and exalted above all for ages. Glory and praise forever. Blessed are you in the temple of your holy glory, praiseworthy and glorious above all forever. Glory and praise forever. And blessed are you on the throne of your kingdom, praiseworthy and exalted forever. And blessed are you who look upon the depths from the throne upon the cherubim, praiseworthy and exalted forever. Glory and praise forever. And blessed are you in the firmament of heaven, praiseworthy and glorious forever. Glory and praise forever. The Lord is with you and also with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to those Jews who believed in him, If you live according to my teaching, you are truly my disciples. Then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. We are descendants of Abraham, was their answer. Never have we been slaves to anyone. What do you mean by saying, you will be free? And Jesus answered them, I give you my assurance. Everyone who lives in sin is the slave of sin. No slave has a permanent place in the family, but the son has a place there forever. That is why, if the Son frees you, you will truly be free. I realize that you are of Abraham's stock. Nonetheless, you are trying to kill me, because my word finds no hearing among you. I tell what I have seen in the Father's presence. You do what you have heard from your Father. And they retorted, our father is Abraham, Jesus told them. Well, if you are Abraham's children, you would be following Abraham's example. The fact is you are trying to kill me, a man who has told you the truth, which I have heard from God. Abraham did nothing like that. Indeed, you are doing your father's works. They cried, we are an illegitimate breed. We have but one Father, and that is God himself. And Jesus answered, Were your God your Father, you would love me. For I came forth from God and am here. I did not come of my own will. It was he who sent me. My sisters and my brothers, the good news of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My sisters and my brothers, may the word of God be on my lips that I worthily proclaim his gospel. How many of you remember that infamous film, The Passion of Christ? Well, Pontius Pilate asks a question which has for centuries confused and occupied the mind. What is truth. For us as people living in a world of relativism, it is quite possible that we too have questioned the meaning of truth. In the gospel today, Jesus tells the Jews that this truth will indeed set them free. However, the Jews believe they have missed something. They don't believe that they have been found by anything, much less, much less able to be set free of it. They answer him, we are descendants of Abraham and have never been enslaved to anyone. And how can you say you will become free? Little did they know that the very thing 
which they were denying bound them at that very moment. And that was the power of sin. Jesus tells them that the moment of sin is committed, we are bound by it. And it entraps us. And we no longer can see the truth clearly, but view a stored, distorted version of it. That is truth. This reminds me of a particular dream of St. John Bosco. Do you remember St. John Bosco? Which continues to resonate in my memory. One of his most vivid dreams is entitled, The Road to Hell, where Father Bosco is led by a guide on a treacherous journey to the innermost pit of hell. And Father Bosco recalls, I was staring in bewilderment about me when a lad dashed out of a gate. Seemingly unaware of anything else, he emitted a most shrilling scream, like one who is about to fall into a quadrant of liquid bronze and plummeted it into the center of the cave, and instantly he too became incandescent and perfectly motionless, while the echo of his dying wail lingered for an instant more. The lad did not know what he was doing. Why was he dashing into the innermost pit of horrible pain? Didn't he know what he was doing, and why didn't he stop? Well, this is what happens to us because of our sin. We are blinded by our own sinfulness and cannot see the truth of happiness and love. The hold of sin is so profound that we cannot lift its power from our life. We're dashing just as the young lad was deeper in the innermost pit of hell, seemingly without hope. However, we have hope. A hope so great that even conquered the most evil bindings of all, sin and death. Christ is the way. Christ is the truth. And Christ is is the life. We must hold that truth because only then will we be fully free. Jesus is waiting for us daily in the Eucharist, fully embodying truth and present to rid us of sin in the sacrament of reconciliation. Let us release ourselves of that which is restricting us. For if we do, we will not dash into darkness and despair, but rather will embrace freedom and complete liberty. You will know the truth, and the truth, my sisters and brothers, will set you free. May Almighty God bless us, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let us now begin with our intercessions. We are the work of God's hands. Even in times of trouble, he does not abandon us. Rather, he brings us into the light. In quiet trust, we present the needs of the church and the world, saying, Lord, hear our prayer. For Cassina, that we continue to grow in unity, charity, and peace, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For global peace, that the leaders of nations promote peace and respect the dignity of all peoples, we, can, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all seeking to grow in their faith, that Christ will reveal himself more and more to all who are preparing to receive the sacraments this spring and to help them to live faithfully 
As the children of the light, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer for renewal. That we attune ourselves to the presence of God within as he guides us to make positive changes and try new approaches that renew us in mind, body, and spirit. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all who are suffering, that God's unending love will bring faith, health, health to the sick, food to the hungry, shelter to the homeless, jobs to the unemployed, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all who have asked for prayer, I ask you now to remember those who have asked you for prayer as we pray for those who have submitted their names to us. For Dorothy and Donald Dougherty, for Father Edgar, for Margaret Mahoney, Owen Dunn, Hannah Dunn, Margaret Southward, Mar Mar Marilyn Gugelota, Amanda Deluta, Lorraine and Steve, Ramona Van Bamos, Preston Ray, Stephanie, Robert Shipley, Franz Theogne, Renee and Starlet and Amanda Pittman, and Mary Vavarina, Stacy Ristofer, Father Mike Dakota, Vera Green, Mary Pataklis, Dennis and Nancy Murr, Bishop Ronald Stevens, Andre Hayes, Deacon D Victor Ayala, Cheryl Davis, Father Victor Santos and family, and Ken Markowitz. For these and for all that we've remembered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. I ask you now to add your own intentions as we pause for a moment. I'd like to pray for all the children who are at the borders, locked away, that we, this country may find a pathway for them to freedom we pray to the Lord. And Lord, for all the unspoken intentions, we pray. God, presence and power are the only reality. Wherever we are, God is. And at the level of the Spirit, we are always protected. We thank you, Lord, for all this as we pray. My sisters and my brothers, the Lord Jesus said to us, peace I leave you, peace I give to you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church gathered here and online. And may the peace of Jesus be with you. Peace. My sisters and my brothers, let us now offer before the Lord the gifts of us, his people, in the sacrifice of bread and wine, and we pray. Blessed are you, Lord, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. this mystery of this water and wine may we come to share in the divinity of Christ who hung himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have this wine to offer for the divine and the work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord God, we ask you to receive you, receive us and be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite heart. Lord, wash away my iniquities and cleanse me of my sins. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that this our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all God's church. Lord God, may the power of this sacrifice wash away our sins, renew our lives, 
and bring us to salvation. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. Father, all-powerful and ever-living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks. Through our observance of Lent, you correct our faults and raise our minds to you and help us to grow in holiness and offer us the reward of everlasting life through Christ our Lord. Through him, the angels and all the choirs of heaven worship in awe before your presence. May our voices be one with theirs as they sing with joy to their unending hymn of glory. Join with me. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna. Lord, you are holy indeed, the fountain of all holiness. Let your spirit come upon these gifts to make them holy, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Before he was given up to death, a death he freely accepted, he took bread. He gave you thanks and praise. He broke the bread. He gave it to his disciples as he said, Take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body which will be given up for you. My Lord and my God. And when supper had ended, he took the cup. Again, he gave you thanks and praise, giving it to his disciples, he said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and the everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for all so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. My Lord and my God. Let us proclaim our mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And I will be using the Eucharistic prayer, the ecumenical Eucharistic prayer. Calling to mind the death your Son endured for our salvation, his glorious resurrection and ascension into heaven, and ready to greet him when he comes again, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and this living sacrifice. Grant that we who are nourished by his body and blood may be filled with the Holy Spirit and become one body, one spirit in Christ. Lord, remember your church throughout the whole world and make us grow together with Francis, the Bishop of Rome. Remember Bartholomew, the Patriarch of Constantinople, Justin, the Archbishop of Canterbury, and Joris, the Archbishop of Utrecht, and all our Cassina bishops, Ronald and Frank, Michael and Tony, and especially our own bishop, Anthony. Remember this community of faith in all people who worship in the heritage handed down to us from Mary Magdalene, the Apostle to the apostles, Peter and Paul, James and John, Matthew and Andrew, and all the apostles and eyewitnesses of your son's resurrection. Remember our Protestant brothers and evangelical brothers and sisters and their leaders, and all who believe in the one true God, who share with us the saving message of the gospel of Christ that was faithfully preached by Martin Luther King Jr., for which he gave his life in our own time. And remember our Jewish brothers and sisters and all people of Israel from whom we have received the law and the prophets 
and of our Savior, Jesus, the Messiah. May your grace pierce the veils that separate us and may the inspiration of your spirit make us one on the path of wisdom. And may the brilliant light of Christ lead us to discover love in every human heart. And hear the prayers of the family you have gathered here before you today. In mercy and love, unite all your children with Mary, the Virgin, Blessed Virgin Mother of God, St. Patrick, and today we celebrate his feast day, St. Charles of Brazil, St. Mother Teresa of Calcutta, the patron saint of my parish, and St. Francis of Assisi, and all who have done your will throughout the ages, welcome into your kingdom our departed brothers and sisters, and all who have left this world in your friendship. We hope to enjoy forever the vision of your glory through Jesus Christ our Lord, from whom all good things come. Please join with me in singing. Through him, with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. My sisters and my brothers, let us join together our voices as we pray the prayer that Jesus gave to his church. When he walked upon this earth, one of his disciples, as he turned to the, to the path to pray, said, Lord, teach us to pray. And Jesus lifted his heart and his eyes to heaven, and he gave to his church the prayer of the Our Father. A prayer that unites all Christians throughout this world. And so my sisters and my brothers, especially during this Lent, let us pray for the unity of God's church, but most especially, let us pray for the unity of our homes and families, as we say, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin and protect us from all anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. By the mingling of this body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, bring eternal life to us who receive it. My sisters and my brothers, for those of you who are at home today, I know it's been difficult during this pandemic of not being available to receive Holy Communion in the presence. But I ask you, we are a communion family. We are a Eucharistic community wherever we are. I ask you to join with me now in this prayer of spiritual communion for all who can receive communion today and for all who receive communion spiritually. Please say after me, my Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things. And I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
my sisters and my brothers. Behold the Son of God who has come to set us free. Happy are we who are called to this table. Lord, I am worthy to receive you. You have said the word, and I am free. May the body and the blood of Christ bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, may we never misuse your healing gifts, but always find in them a source of life and salvation. Grant this through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. My brothers and sisters, thank you for joining me today in this liturgy. I'm Father Victor Ray, pastor of St. Teresa of Calcutta Catholic Community in St. Petersburg, Florida, where the weather today is absolutely beautiful. Thanks be to God. My brothers and sisters, if you're going to celebrate St. Patty's Day today, do it in moderation. I'm not a bishop, so I can't give you dispensation. And I think our bishops would probably give you dispensation if you're going to share today. Do it wisely. Do it in the name of the Lord. But especially, Enjoy the life that Christ has given to you to enjoy. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. My sisters and my brothers, this liturgy has ended, but let us go to serve the Lord with love on our faces and on our hearts. Thanks be to God.